Don't you think this is just a little too gem in the holograms I mean, you know, the 80s. Hey! Hi, dolls! It's me, Wilma Fingerdo, with the Fingerdo review of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under Season 3, the finale! And before we could get to it, I want to thank Joseph Kotz for his tip or do, which he left using the link in my link tree. Pardon my delay in saying thanks, Joseph. She's been busy. I also need to thank Erin in Ottawa for her tip or do, her, her tip or do as well. And last, but certainly not least, joining the Fingerdo family on Patreon at the princess level is Alden. Kui, Alden. I hope that you can make it to our next live chats. We have live chats over on my Patreon. Did you know? Because you do now. I also want to send a shout out to my Patreoner, David Burkett. He sent me this fabulous wig from Vanity Wigs, which is an Australian wig company that is co-owned by Courtney Yatt. This is their Glam and Go Dolly in Golden Fire. And because it's the finale of Drag Race Down Under, I thought I'd wear a wig from Down Under. So, big love and thanks to David Burkett for the wig. And cheers to Vanity Wigs for making it in the first place. If you'd like to see more from Vanity Wigs, I'll put a link to them down in my description box below. Just above the links for leaving a tip or do or joining the Fingerty family on Patreon. Just saying. Now, Jorge Timmy. Oh, what a pretty cup. Oh, isn't this lovely? Now, what's the tea? Oh, this one's from Aunt B. Aunt B sent me this tea. You know, she's my nail whisperer. She likes to keep me clawed when she's not gilding Coco Cane's delicious digits from uh, Dragula. She's helping me out. Cooey, Aunt B, and thanks for the tea. Seriously. Okay, well, finally, I'm reviewing the finale of Drag Race Down Under's third season. I've been a tad busy convalescing after my stay at a plush medical center here in Toronto, and apparently I'm a medical marvel. My words, not theirs. So, we started the finale off with the final three feeling their oats. Oh, and they bid Hollywood a fond farewell, too. And, of course, there was the floor and icy double win thing, but mostly... It was the oats, and why the hell shouldn't they be celebrating? Just one more hoop to jump through before one of them is crowned the winner of season three. And what was that hoop, you ask? Something daring, unexpected, and innovative? What do you knew? Nope, it was Rue in more or less the same thing she was wearing last week with the same challenge for more or less all the finales of all the drag races ever. Yes, the queens had to write a verse of RuPaul's latest song, Crying on the dance floor, the deep down under mix. And, as expected, that wasn't it. There was going to be choreo with down under season two lip sync assassin, Queen Kong, which nobody seemed happy about. And finally, what's a finale without a Tic Tac lunch with Rue and... Without a Jaffa lunch? What's a Jaffa? Chocolate orange balls, barf. Sounds British. But first, the Queen's got to writing. Gabs wanted her lyrics to share her story of survival and how her ADHD diagnosis helped her get over her cycle of addiction and hopes it helps others too. But that was the easy part, writing. The next thing the queens knew, they were staring down the business end of Queen Kong and she was not playing. And by the business end, I mean Queen Kong was rocking the hell out of that denim ensemble. <laughs> not to mention her assistants, Vincent and Compton. Hi. Now, I don't know if the level of difficulty with this choreography was Queen Kong being a professional and giving the finalists a challenge, or if this was a titchy touch of the bitter Brenda's on Kong's part for not making it to the finale of her season. I'm guessing a little bit of both. The only one who seemed to be having no trouble at all was non-professional dancer Isis Avis Loren. Or should that be non-professional liar? The lunches with Michelle and Rue gave the queens a chance to get off their feet, but they certainly didn't go easy on their heartstrings. During Icy's lunch, she confessed that until four weeks before she walked into the workroom, her father didn't know she did drag. As she said, telling him was the last pin she had to pull to be free. As you can imagine, it was a huge weight off her shoulders, but her dad surprised everyone by saying that this is who you are and I love you. It was a touching moment, needless to say. So Kleenex. During Floor's lunch, she said she started drag because her cousin was a fashion designer and put his dresses on her. I can't imagine there was much of a fight. 
Needless to say, that changed everything for our floor. Michelle also took a moment to thank Floor once again for the work she does with people with dementia, and both she and Rue complimented her on her upbeat, positive attitude. Gabriella Labucci had an interesting moment during her lunch. Although Gabby's family is supportive, her grandfather was a minister, and she was afraid to come out to him. Fast forward to her pop passing, and there's Gabs going through some photos and sees one of her pop giving a sermon in drag. Go figure. Needless to say, it was a heartwarming way for Gabriella to know she had nothing to be afraid of. Families. You know, I love them. <laughs> the next day, as the queens were getting ready for their last runway, the room mail alarm went off, which clearly scared the bejesus out of them. But not as much as Spanky Jackson bursting into the room. I love Spanky Jackson in and out of drag. And that's before I heard she had a nice penis. And what was Spanky doing there in the workroom au casual? Helping the queens not get too much into their heads about the finale. And I think it worked. Spanky asked who was the shadiest floor. She also asked who was going to win. I see because she has three wins. And then they worked out their final nerves with a sock fest. You know, the huge. And then it was time for the runway. This is what Rue wore. I liked everything about this except for whatever cat toy she had pinned to her chest. It was too distracting. I'll bet people all over the world couldn't see their TV screens because their cats were all up in it going... Once people were able to move their kitties, they could see it was just Michelle and Reese at the judges' table. It's a finale. You don't need fresh eyes. Up first, crying on the dance floor, the deep down under mix. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I like this song. I liked each of the Queen's lyrics. I liked what they were wearing. The only thing I didn't like was the fact that Gabriella Labucci was the only queen wearing drag hair. Floor's wig looked like a shake and go that got up and went and... Human or not, who cares if Isa can rock 42 inches? I need a little air in my drag queen's hair, so extra points for Gabriella for that high pony. But beyond that, I was really impressed with how well all the queens did. I will admit that poor Floor seemed to stumble through some of the choreography, but she was very quick to use her default move, drying with the towel, drying with the towel, hey, drying with the towel, <laughs> drying with the towel. So at least she kept moving is all I'm saying. Speaking of moving... Category is Finale Eleganza Extravaganza. Floor was first, and I don't know. Maybe my idea of Eleganza is different from hers, but I did not love this dress on Floor. I get it. She was representing her Guatemalan culture and chose the national bird as inspiration, but I think she was being too literal. She didn't need those feathers. Certainly not all up on her head the way she had them with that chartreuse beanie keeping them all in her head. And yes... Chartreuse Beanie was my drag queen name in high school. I would have rather seen Floor without a wig, never mind that shake and go one she had on. What is it with her and unstyled wigs? Yeah, I would have ditched that wig and recreated one just out of the feathers. Something dramatic and asymmetrical would have elevated the whole look. Plus, then she could have ditched that feathered collar, which I felt was only added to make more sense of that chartreuse beanie. And lastly, I hated whatever was going on in the front of her gown. That crossover of fabric looked awkward. If she had worn a body-fitting dress, that kind of detail would have looked a lot better, if you ask me. No one did. That outfit aside, I still thought Floor looked gorgeous, but I have to give her a finger don't. Gabriella Labucci was next, and I don't think her makeups ever look better. If that's not a glam face, then I don't want to know what is. And that wig... Not my absolute favorite, but it was big and bold, and that's good enough for me. The dress, however, this was another rough one. I feel like Gabriella tried too hard with this. First off, that slit on her skirt was way too high. Drag queens do this all the time. If you're going to slit your skirt up to your navel, throw on some ginge, seriously. Now, in Gabby's defense... That was a side slit, and her secret garden remained a secret. But still, it was a little distracting. Admit it, you looked. And I get that that satin wrap sleeve creation was meant to be a big bow, but that didn't make it look less ugly, no offense. I know it was wired into shape, but I still expected it to slide off her whenever she raised her arms. Again, I think this could have been executed a little bit better. Still, it was a much more glamorous silhouette than Floor, so I'll give Gabriella a finger due for effort. Like a pity due.
Finally, we had Isis Avis Loren. First off, that wig was gorgeous. It was just high enough to give me the drama without overpowering the dress. And that dress! So simple. It was putting the elegant into the elegance of tonight is all I'm saying. That lavender silk wrap skirt over that cream beaded bodice and the matching lavender gloves. No necklace, just big drag earrings. What can I say? It was perfection and perfection always gets a finger due. Seriously. As far as the judges deliberations, it went as one would expect. All the queens got love slopped on them by the judges. Of course they did. No point telling them what you hate now. Of course, the what would you tell your six-year-old self moment complete with photos happened. And what can I tell you? There were laughs. There were tears all around. It was a rich tapestry. Back in the workroom, the queens were feeling it. Based on the positive comments from the judges, Gabriella Labucci was feeling pretty good about her chances for a win. Isis Avis Loren, on the other hand, was concerned that Gabriella showing improvement recently in the race was going to get more attention than the fact that she's been, well, operating at that level for, well, let's just say it, day one. Tell me I'm lying. Floor, on the other hand, was hoping that her magnetic personality and charisma was going to be enough to bring her the crown. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. When the queens returned to the main stage, Rue wasted no time in telling them that this was as far as Floor was going and that it just wasn't her time. Well, from the look on Floor's face, someone's getting their tires slashed and as upset as Floor was, I hope she understands how well she did and how much people really liked her. Seriously, here's to you, Floor. I liked you. I thought you were great. As for Gabriella and Isis, they had to lip sync one last time, this time to an iconic drag number. Walk in on broken glass by none other than the diva herself. Diva, see what I did there? Annie Lennox. The nice thing about this song is that it's not a jump and jive number. There's no call for death drops and jump splits, but because of the lyrics, I was expecting to see some rolling around on the floor at least. Gabriella dipped into her comedy bag for a trick or two, but for the most part, gave Isis a run for her money by emoting up a storm. Speaking of emoting, I don't know if Isis did a better job lip syncing or that I just liked her outfit better, but either way, she wasn't making this easy for Gabby to steal away from her. So when the music died, Rue wasted no time in bringing back to the stage Drag Race Down Under's reigning queen from season two, Spanky Jackson, who look gorgeous, by the way, to assist in the crowning of this season's queen. And who was that queen, you ask? Well, it was none other than Isis Avis Loren. Here's to Icy, and here's to Gabriella. I thought they did a great job, seriously. Hmm. And here's to the cast and crew of Drag Race Down Under Season 3. I know a lot of people didn't enjoy this season, but I did. And for what it's worth, I hope they create a fourth season. How about you? Did you hang on to the bitter end, or did you bail this season like so many others? And what about our winner, Isis? She seemed to be the odds-on favorite early. Were you happy to see her win, or would you have rather seen someone else win? Personally, I was happy with the top three queens, but I think it would have made for an exciting surprise ending if Floor had won. Seriously, can you imagine? First Spanky, then Floor? There'd be anarchy! <laughs> Well, I'm off to review Drag Race UK Season 5. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, please support the Figure Do Review by giving this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribing to my channel if you haven't. If you'd like to support the channel even more, there are ways to leave tipper dues. Uh, you can do it through YouTube's thanks button or the link down in the description box below this screen. I know, it all sounds too dirty. There are also links to my Redbubble store and becoming a member of the Finger Dude family on Patreon. Until next time, stay healthy, be happy, and miss me! Mwah, seriously. Tell me more. did like this season of Drag Race. Yeah. So funny, you know, I didn't hate season two either. I liked season two. I just didn't review season two because I hated season one. I hated season one. I wasn't a big fan of a lot of the queens that were on season one. I wasn't a big fan of a lot of the choices that happened, whether they were understandable or not. I mean, it was just, oh, it was just too much. And then, so season two, I enjoyed and didn't review it. Oh, so that's why I reviewed season three. And I did enjoy it. And the others did.